Thank you. That concludes the debate on cost of living mortgage rescue scheme. It is now time to move on to the next item of business, which is a statement by Hamza Youssef on NHS Forth Valley update. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I will allow a moment for, for front benches to, to organise themselves. I call on Hamza Youssef, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. There is uh, no doubt whatsoever that in the face of a global pandemic, these last two and a half years have been uh, quite easily the most difficult of uh, the, the NHS has ever faced. Uh, it is my belief that the vast majority of the public are, of course, understanding of these difficulties, but equally they quite rightly expect the Health Board to provide the required leadership to help navigate through these really difficult waters. And over the course of the last year, a number of elected members from right across this chamber have raised a variety of concerns in relation to the services being provided by Forth Valley Health Board. Today, I am providing an update on the actions we have been taking that we will continue to take to address those concerns. I can today confirm that the Scottish Government has taken the decision to escalate NHS Forth Valley to stage four of the NHS Scotland Performance Escalation Framework, and we are doing so for issues of governance leadership and culture. Now, the Scottish Government has been engaging with Forth Valley, NHS Forth Valley for some time in a range of performance related issues. Members may be aware of recent reports published by Healthcare Improvement Scotland in relation to the safe delivery of care in NHS Forth Valley Royal Infirmary. Indeed, uh, HIS have carried out several unannounced safe delivery of care inspections just this year due to ongoing concerns about the safe delivery of care. His have escalated their concerns to the Scottish Government as they have not seen uh, the required improvement in Forth Valley since the very initial inspection they undertook. His is expected to publish its most recent report in the coming few weeks. There are also concerns with the sustainability and integration of GP out of our services in the region. Indeed, we had a members' debate uh, on that very issue in this chamber. Consistently poor a &E performance against a four-hour standard, and there are also issues relating to the integration of social care services. Whilst poor performance in any of these discrete areas is of, is of concern, uh, I expect effective governance, strong leadership and improved culture to deliver sustainable change. Unfortunately, I have not seen the necessary leadership required to drive improvement in these areas of concern. That is why the focus of this escalation is on governance, leadership and culture. Stage four escalation comes into effect from today, Wednesday, the 23rd of November, and brings direct formal oversight and coordination, uh, coordinated engagement between the Scottish Government uh, in the form of an assurance board chaired by Christine McLaughlin, the Director of Population Health. The purpose of the assurance board is firstly to support NHS Forth Valley in determining what steps are necessary to ensure the delivery of high quality governance, leadership and culture in NHS Forth Valley, and in doing so support improvements in relation to a range of performance and quality related issues. And second, to advise the DG, the Director General uh, for Health and Social Care, through agreed governance routes that such steps have been taken, with of course the DG updating me on a regular basis. In delivery of this, the Assurance Board will seek to ensure appropriate governance is in place, particularly with regards to providing scrutiny of performance, leadership style uh, and indeed practice. The Assurance Board will scrutinise the NHS Forth Valley Improvement Plan and hold the leadership to account for the effective delivery of improvement actions within the timescales that have been agreed. In doing so, we will work to ensure that the leadership is operating in an effective and inclusive manner particularly when understanding and managing performance issues, and that there is a positive and inclusive culture in NHS Forth Valley. The group will also consider any lessons learned that could be shared across uh, wider NHS Scotland, and will provide advice around the future escalation status of NHS Forth Valley, including, of course, criteria for de-escalation. The first meeting of the Assurance Board will take place next week to ensure that improvements are delivered as quickly as is possible.
I have asked Professor Hazel Borland, former nurse director and interim chief executive of NHS Ayrshire and Arran, uh, and Dr John Harden, the deputy national clinical director, to lead the senior level external support to the board. Healthcare Improvement Scotland will also provide tailored support to deliver on the actions that they set out uh, following recent inspections. Professor Borland brings a wealth of experience and she will work jointly with Dr Harden, the Scottish Government Directors, Healthcare Improvement Scotland and other delivery partners to support the senior leadership team to deliver those uh, required improvements. This includes supporting NHS Forth Valley in the development agreement and delivery of a coordinated improvement plan across the affected service areas. As I have already set out, Presiding Officer, Scottish, the Scottish Government has been uh, engaging with Forth Valley for an extended period of time uh, across a range of different issues as part of the standard uh, board sponsorship work and a resp response also to ongoing concerns that have been raised. This engagement and ongoing support has been crucial in providing the board leadership with the time and space to take responsibility for change within their own organisation. Escalation is a last resort, not a decision uh, that is taken lightly, uh, and it is a decision we have taken, we have had to take following a consistent demonstration that the NHS Forth Valley leadership team uh, is unable to follow through with the transformational change that is required without additional formal support and monitoring. Uh, to that effect, John Burns, the Chief Operating Officer of NHS Scotland, Caroline Lamb, the Director General for Health and Social Care, uh, met with the Chair and Chief Executive of NHS Forth Valley. I myself have spoken to both the Chief Executive and Chair today to convey my concerns, but also to articulate very clearly my expectations for immediate and sustained improvement in the period ahead. They have agreed that the Assurance Board will review and scrutinise the improvement plan developed by NHS Forth Valley leadership team that, which, that will set out short, uh, medium and longer term actions. I expect the improvement plan to be developed and presented to the Assurance Board for scrutiny at its first meeting uh, next week with a focus on completing immediate actions uh, in a matter of uh, weeks as opposed to months. While lasting change of course will take time, it is crucial that we see urgent and tangible improvements uh, in the coming weeks and months ahead. NHS Forth Valley already have a number of clear actions and recommendations against which we expect them to deliver. Uh, this includes work to strengthen the integration of health and social care uh, out of our services to make improvements in unscheduled care uh, and mental health services. I expect NHS Forth Valley leadership to work collaboratively with the Council and IGB partners to deliver the necessary changes, including, including the development of a shared narrative that expresses their ambition for integration of health and social care services in the territorial area. I also expect NHS Forth Valley to take the findings of the Healthcare Improvement Scotland inspections extremely uh, seriously. It is imperative that the leadership team deliver immediate improvements against the recommendations and requirements set out in those reports. And of course, I will monitor uh, progress in that regard very, very closely. Forth Valley is also one of the poorest performing boards in terms of psychological therapies and CAMs and there has been less progress than we would have hoped to have seen compared to other areas. We have already uh, been providing tailored support to help with meeting the standard, uh, providing access to professional advice and also ensuring they have robust improvement plans in place, again all being monitored uh, very closely. The actions I have described today are not exhaustive but provide an insight into the type of change that is required uh, within the Health Board. And, uh, and will support uh, NHS Forth Valley to remove the barriers impacting on their operational performance and indeed on their pandemic recovery. Uh, to close, uh, I would like to put on record my thanks and appreciation to the staff who are working tirelessly across NHS Scotland and indeed in NHS Forth Valley, Valley to deliver the high quality care we expect. Uh, stage four escalation that I have announced today is not a reflection on staff uh, who are working tirelessly, as I say, to provide care for the population of uh, Forth Valley. However, we must recognise that there are continuing concerns uh, in relation to leadership in Forth Valley to effectively respond to these issues uh, when raised. Well, it will, of course, take time for NHS Forth Valley to assure the public uh, and indeed the Scottish Government that sustained improvement has been made. I hope this statement itself provides some assurance that significant work is already underway to address the legitimate concerns uh, that have been raised. I will continue to, of course, update Parliament as progress is made, and, of course, uh, happy to uh, continue engagement with elected members uh, right across the Chamber.
Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I will allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we will move on to the next item of business. I would be very grateful if members who wish to ask a question were to press now. And I call Sandesh Gohani. I welcome this announcement today, and I fully support the bullied, broken and burnt-out frontline staff of NHS Forth Valley, but I also urge patients to continue attending when required, because the staff are still excellent. As shocking as the allegations at NHS Forth Valley Royal Hospital are, this is only one example of how the health service under the SNP simply isn't working. We have five consultants quitting in NHS Forth Valley amidst a culture of bullying, £2.8 million paid out in compensation in NHS Highland amidst a culture of bullying, and complaints of harassment in NHS Tayside tripling over five years due to a culture of bullying. And yet an FOI submitted by myself to Forth Valley revealed that no NHS Forth Valley managers have faced any sanctions. A bullying culture seems widespread throughout our NHS. Insiders at NHS Forth Valley Royal Hospital have called it unsafe, toxic, a war zone with staff working in intolerable conditions. But what struck out to me the most was a quote claiming that an irretrievable breakdown of working relationships had happened between staff and leaders. So my question to the Cabinet Secretary, with allegations of a toxic culture dating back to July of last year, will he guarantee action being taken against those responsible? And can he commit to a root and branch investigation of this toxic culture in NHS Forth Valley, but also across Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I thank uh, Sanish Gohani for his question? Can I also uh, associate myself uh, with those remarks and reiterate the remarks I made at the very end uh, of my own uh, statement, which is that this is not a reflection on really hard-working, exceptional staff uh, right across NHS uh, Fourth Valley, regardless of uh, what job they have in NHS Fourth Valley. Uh, they are an integral part uh, of that uh, health service and of that health board. And what I would say to Dr. Uh, Gohani is the, the reason why I've included culture within the escalation. Uh, uh, framework um, uh, is because of some of the concerns, many of the concerns that he is right to raise and indeed other members have raised uh, very much uh, in this chamber. Uh, so immediate improvement and sustained, and that's really important for me to emphasise that word, sustained improvement in culture in NHS Fourth Valley uh, is absolutely uh, key. I, I don't agree uh, with his uh, assertion uh, that there is a widespread bullying culture in the NHS. There are when you have a a, an organisation the size of NHS, uh, the largest employer uh, in the country, you are unfortunately going to have issues uh, around culture. It's important that we address them uh, and therefore I'm committed absolutely to doing that. What I will also say is that having met every single whistleblowing champion uh, across the boards uh, in Scotland, uh, let me say categorically that of course uh, I, I, I not only support that whistleblowing is an important mechanism to raise concerns, uh, but I would hope that every single member of the NHS uh, feels confident in the whistleblowing uh, processes and their complaints will be taken uh, with the utmost seriousness. Jackie Bailey. Let me start on a point of consensus with the Cabinet Secretary, because today's decision is not a reflection on the dedication and hard work of staff who are working day and night to care for patients. Instead, it demonstrates beyond doubt that this Cabinet Secretary has let down the staff and patients in Forth Valley, and the facts speak for themselves. The Health Board is repeatedly the worst performing for A&E waiting times, and that's despite the valiant efforts of A&E consultants and nurses. The most recent figures show that in September, only 58.8% of patients were seen in four hours. The Royal College of Emergency Medicine are very clear. They've warned that long waits result in poorer patient outcomes and risk lives. In June this year, Healthcare Improvement Scotland published its inspection report. That report flagged up serious concerns about patient safety due to a lack of nurses. This is not a health board problem. This is a system-wide NHS problem over which this Cabinet Secretary presides. Presiding officer, can he perhaps explain why, given the clear risk of harm to patients, that it's taken six months for him to act? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I say to, to Jackie Bailey the concerns around E&E &E, uh, that she expresses are concerns that uh, not only I share, but I suspect are shared 
uh, right across the chamber here and also across the population uh, of Forth Valley. And that's one of the reasons why I've asked Dr John Harden, who's not only the Deputy National Clinical Director, uh, he of course currently also works as an a and &E consultant in NHS uh, Lanarkshire, so he will bring that specific expertise uh, in that regard. In terms of um, why has it taken uh, so long, I think it's a reasonable question for uh, Jackie Bailey uh, to ask. Uh, we know, of course, that being in the midst of a global pandemic, our A&E departments right across the country are challenged. And escalation is genuinely a last, last resort. So we've been working with the board to see where we can uh, see improvement. And there have been weeks where there's been fluctuations and we've seen some improvement, uh, but that has not been sustained. And I come back to that word, which is incredibly important, that um, we want to see not just immediate improvement, but sustained improvement. So uh, the reason why we have got to this point, and it has taken uh, some time is because escalation is not a decision you take lightly. It is an absolute last resort, particularly when you're escalating uh, to level four. And I'm happy, of course, uh, to keep Jackie Bailey updated, uh, particularly in relation to A&E. I call Michelle Thompson to be followed by Alexander Stewart. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his statement. The situation he outlines is serious, and I know from my previous career, including managing large transformational change programmes, that organisational culture is set from the very top. I understand the chair of the board is very experienced and I'm sure is aware of how serious the situation is. Can the Cabinet Secretary therefore confirm the board and the chair in particular understands the relationship between their overarching governance, leadership and culture? And does he believe the board are ready to demonstrate they have what it takes to turn a situation around? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I think Michelle Thompson uh, is absolutely right in what uh, she says, that, that leadership uh, obviously comes from the top uh, and people take uh, uh, a view from the leadership in relation to the culture that then permeates right throughout the board. So in my discussions today uh, with both the chair and the chief executive, uh, I've made it very clear my expectations. Um, we have uh, as much, uh, we, have, we have many uh, strategies, we have many documents, but they are only as good as their implementation. And that is why uh, I have asked the Assurance Board, headed by uh, Christine McLaughlin, uh, to make sure that these are not just words of comfort and reassurance that we're hearing, but actually we're seeing tangible improvements from the top, from the leadership, and that is then permeating, as I say, right throughout the organisation. But uh, the proof uh, of the pudding, as they say, will be in the eating, and therefore uh, we will wait to see what the improvement plan uh, says, the timescales involved. I will be personally monitoring that, as you can expect. Uh, but let me be absolutely clear, I expect to see some immediate improvements and those improvements to be sustained over a period of time. Alexander Stewart to be followed by Stephanie Callaghan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. NHS Fourth Valley moving into Level 4 is a damning indictment of the Board, which requires to ensure that facilities across NHS Fourth Valley are safe and fit for purpose. In the statement, Cabinet Secretary, you say that you will ensure that leadership is operating in an effective and inclusive manner, particularly when understanding and managing performance issues. I have had numerous whistleblowers contact me who have raised concerns that they are not being listened to by management, experiencing place work bullying, poor working conditions and complaining of a toxic environment. Therefore, Cabinet Secretary, how will you address the concerns of these whistleblowers going forward and ensure that this toxic culture is stamped out once and for all? Cabinet Secretary. Well, can, can I thank Alexander Stewart? He uh, has often uh, raised with me uh, a number of concerns in relation to, to Fourth Valley. In fact, uh, the most recent just uh, last week. Uh, and uh, he has done so in a very constructive uh, manner uh, when, when, he, when he has raised those issues. Uh, what I will say to him uh, is that, uh, again, as I said to his colleague, Sanders Kohani, uh, that is why uh, the escalation framework is in relation to leadership and culture. Uh, what I will do on the back of Alexander Stewart's contribution is directly meet with the whistleblowing champion and, the, and, and uh, some of those involved in uh, whistleblowing uh, in relation to, to NHS Fourth Valley, but particularly, I think, uh, the whistleblowing champion, to see if there's any further other support that we can offer. What I'll also do is speak to Christy McLaughlin, uh, who will be heading that assurance board. Uh, she will uh, already know uh, my thoughts on this, but I will reiterate uh, the importance uh, that we place on whistleblowing and whistleblowing being effective in NHS Fourth Valley. There is much interest in this statement. I would like to get all members in. I'd be grateful if we could um, bear that in mind. Stephanie Callahan to be followed by Richard Lenners. Presiding officer, patient safety is key in all of this. So, Healthcare Improvement Scotland's independent inspections of Fourth Valley Hospital are very welcome. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide an update as to the next steps we can expect following these inspections? 
Cabinet Secretary. Yeah, again, I agree wholeheartedly with, with Stephanie uh, Callaghan. Uh, his inspections uh, and the unannounced inspections uh, provide uh, a great source of uh, information uh, and, and also, at times, including this particular circumstance, a great alarm, uh, particularly where we haven't seen improvements made in between inspections. I think if there are a number of inspections that take place and we haven't seen uh, the, the required and requisite uh, improvements, that gives me uh, great concern. And it's one of the reasons, one of the significant reasons, why we've decided to escalate uh, to uh, level four. Um, I understand that uh, his will be publishing uh, their most recent uh, update in relation to their, their most recent inspection uh, at the beginning of next month. Richard Leonard to be followed by Emma Roddick. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Can I uh, refer members to my register of interest? While we all await the outcome of a follow-up inspection by Health Improvement Scotland, patients are still being nursed in overcrowded wards. Consultants are leaving in droves. And workers are not being paid properly because of management interference in a job evaluation scheme. Why has the Health Secretary not acted before given this state of affairs and given this level of risk? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I don't agree again with the premise of Richard Leonard's uh, question. We have uh, a good record that we stand on in this government in relation to staffing of the NHS. <laughs> there are areas where that has been challenged, but of course we have record high levels of staffing, including record high levels of nursing staffing uh, too. In terms of fair pay, of course our nurses and our agenda for change staff are the best paid than anywhere else in comparison to uh, anywhere else in the UK. Uh, we are still in the midst of those negotiations, as I suspect Richard Leonard will know uh, very well, uh, and indeed those negotiations are ongoing. Uh, I'm very grateful to trade unions for the concerns that they raise with me directly about staffing, uh, and I'm hopeful that we'll get to uh, a positive outcome. Emma Roddick to be followed by Alex Cole-Hamilton. I'm sure members will agree it's vital that we ensure plans for improvement include a focus on reducing pressures on the valued staff of NHS Forth Valley, as we would wish for NHS staff anywhere in Scotland. Can the Cabinet Secretary say any more about the steps which are being taken to engage with frontline staff and their unions to address their concerns and support the delivery of care in these circumstances? Cabinet Secretary. Emma Roddick uh, is really uh, uh, absolutely accurate to mention the workload pressures um, that are on our NHS staff in Forth Valley, but obviously right across the NHS Scotland are still dealing with <coughs> excuse me, uh, the impacts of the pandemic. So we know people are arriving into our A&E departments and into our acute sites are presenting uh, with higher acuity, for example. So that's why, yes, I'll continue my engagement absolutely with trade unions uh, in this regard. We'll also do what we can to increase staffing, and she'll know that in my most recent winter update, I announced further funding to recruit 750 nurses, midwives and AHPs uh, from uh, overseas and we will continue to invest uh, in staffing to help our NHS during what will probably be one of the most difficult winters it's ever faced. Alex Cole-Hamilton to be followed by Rona Mackay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The issues brought to Parliament by the Cabinet Secretary this evening are deeply alarming and I know that staff and patients will want to see a positive outcome from the step he has outlined in this statement. One of the most concerning points that the Cabinet Secretary made is the statement that Forth Valley is one of the poorest performing boards in terms of child and adolescent mental health services and psychological therapies. This will undoubtedly impact on those children and young people living there waiting for children. Uh, for, for for treatment. Can I therefore ask the Cabinet Secretary if any specific steps will be taken to improve Forth Valley's performance in this area and if he is still confident that in March 2023 the target of 90 per cent of patients being seen within 18 weeks will still be met? Cabinet Secretary. Yeah, so that remains uh, the target uh, and, and, and we will do everything we can to try to meet that target uh, for March 2023. Uh, what I will say to Alex Hamilton is I won't preempt the improvement plan, uh, but absolutely we would expect there, there to be specific and detailed action alongside timelines and timescales in relation to psychological therapies and CAMs. Uh, what, I, what, I, what I could do, uh, presenting officer, is ensure that there's a written update from me by the end of the calendar year to members across the Parliament. Uh, so that they can uh, receive that update, but also uh, I, I can commit to regular updates if there are very specific issues that members wish to raise with me too. Rona Mackay, to be followed by Gillian Mackay. Thanks, presiding officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary expand on what help the Scottish Government can provide to support the Health Board to, deliver, to develop an action plan to deliver improvement? 
Cabinet Secretary. May, I, I can be rel relatively brief, but um, the, the Assurance Board would be critical to, to that uh, improvement and that external support that I have already referenced in my statement uh, will also uh, hopefully be able to provide support. I do want the Assurance Board to be that supportive yet challenge, uh, that, that critical friend that will challenge uh, Forth Valley's leadership uh, to make sure that they are ambitious in their timescales for improvement, uh, but also realistic as well. And I have mentioned Professor Hazel Borland, uh, uh, the former nurse director and interim chief executive of Ayrshire and Arran, and Dr John Harden, uh, the deputy national clinical director, uh, who will also provide that support. And I think tailored support from his uh, will also be uh, very helpful uh, in this regard too. Julian Mackay to be followed by Siobhan Brown. <coughs> Thank you, Presiding Officer. I recently met with RCN to discuss their concerns about the leadership and culture at Forth Valley Health Board in my region, and I'd like to thank them for their open and honest discussion. The a &E has rightly been noted in many questions. Can the Cabinet Secretary assure me that the improvement will be sustainable and that the input of staff from all sites will be taken into account when discussing improvement and not just the acute sites at Forth Valley Royal Hospital? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, on, on that latter point, absolutely. This is a, a Fourth Valley, NHS Fourth Valley uh, uh, es escalation. It is not just in relation to Fourth Valley Royal Infirmary uh, as, as, as the, the, the major acute uh, site. So, yes, I can give that absolute categorical assurance uh, in relation to the latter point, uh, latter question that Gillian Mackay asks. Um, she is also absolutely right. The, the improvement has to be sustained, and that is why, um, of course, one of the, 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 the areas of concern is a &E performance, but related to that is social care integration. And we know, and Gillian Mackay uh, has raised again her concerns around Fourth Valley with me uh, very constructively uh, o o over a number of months. And we know that, of course, if we can see improvements in social care, will help with that bed capacity, help with that flow through our hospitals, and ultimately it's better for the individual who's clinically safe to discharge, for example, to be out in their home or, or in a care home close uh, to their home uh, as possible. So, uh, yes, I can give Gillian Mackay an absolute guarantee there's a whole systems approach uh, being taken in relation uh, to this uh, escalation framework. Siobhan Brown to be followed by Ros McCall. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware of recent reports concerning strained relationships, specifically among managers at Forth Valley. Can the Cabinet Secretary say any more about steps which could be taken to support culture change for leaders at all levels? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I, I will uh, perhaps write to Siobhan Brown with uh, a detailed written update because we have quite a lot of programmes uh, that, that help to foster that positive leadership. Uh, and, and positive, compassionate leadership, leading to change, for example, is the Scottish Government's uh, National Leadership Development Programme. I was really pleased to launch that uh, earlier uh, this year. But there's a whole range of initiatives that we have. But I go back to the point uh, that I made to, 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 to a previous member, uh, which is uh, we can have all the strategies and programmes in the world. What we want to see is delivery and implementation on the ground. And that is where the Assurance Board, headed by Christine McLaughlin, uh, will be uh, holding NHS Fourth Valley's leadership, uh, their feet to the fire, in order to ensure that we see that leadership change being implemented in a timely manner, but also in a sustainable manner too. And Rosman Cole. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I'm going to continue on a point um, made already by Alex Cole Hamilton. Uh, on the 22nd of September 2016, the First Minister in this chamber said the performance of NHS Fourth Valley is unacceptable, and that has been made clear in relation to child and adolescent mental health waiting times. Uh, today, now we're the 23rd of November 2022, and the statement says that Fourth Valley remains one of the poorest performing boards in terms of psychological therapies and CAMs and that you've been providing a tailored support and you're monitoring closely. So can the Cabinet Secretary tell me how the Scottish Government has allowed this to go on for so long, and does he agree that our young people deserve way more than close monitoring? Cabinet Secretary. It will be more than uh, just close monitoring. As I've just said in, in a number of answers, what I expect to see is tangible improvements uh, on the ground. Also, I, I will say uh, absolutely candidly, and I've said this on, on many occasions before, that we know there was challenges in relation to the pressure on CAMS uh, pre-pandemic. Pre There's also no doubt, I don't think, from anybody here, that that uh, has been exacerbated by uh, the global pandemic. So we will, of course, want to ensure that we uh, meet our targets as we've set them out in relation to psychological therapies and CAMS. What we'll also do is invest in pre-crisis interventions too. But I can give an absolute guarantee, as I did to uh, a number of members who've asked uh, a very important question around mental health, uh, that uh, when it comes to the improvement plan uh, for, th for NHS Forth Valley, it will include tangible steps for improvement uh, in relation to CAMS and psychological therapies. Thank you. That concludes the ministerial statement, NHS Forth Valley update. Uh, point.
Point of order, Sandesh Gulhani. Apologies, uh, I would like to draw members to my register of interest as a practicing anxious doctor. Thank you, Mr. Gulhani. Your comments are on the record. Uh, point of order, Gillian Mackay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. During the urgent question earlier, my colleague Ross Greer referenced the number of votes that were won by ourselves and the SNP and the corresponding number for the Tories, Labour and the Lib Dems. During that question, from a sedentary position, Douglas Ross was heard by several members in this chamber shouting, he's lying. Yeah. Presiding Officer, I would like to provide a small maths lesson for Mr Ross, despite the fact he's not here. Of all votes cast, both regional and constituency votes, the total for the Greens and the SNP was 2,640,892. For the Tories, Labour and the Lib Dems, that total is 2,624,835. Ms Mackay, Ms Mackay, if I may, um, as I said yesterday, points of order must refer to matters of procedure that relate to the standing orders. Presiding officer, that was my exact next sentence. Presiding officer, given this is the second time in a week Mr Ross has used language to either imply or directly accuse others of lying, could you tell the Chamber, is this a breach of the Code of Conduct and what mechanism can be used to address such poor behaviour? Within months, within months of this Parliament's establishment, the first presiding officer, Sir David Steele, set out the position that while challenges to the accuracy of opinions and facts are perfectly in order, and I will always respect the right of members to make such challenges, the Chair will not tolerate an accusation that a fellow member has been deliberately untruthful. I will always protect the rights of members to scrutinise and to challenge each other. However, I will say that where I am clear that an accusation of that nature has been made, I will intervene. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 6914 in the name of George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a business motion. And I call on George Adam to move the motion. Thank you, President Officer, and moved. Thank you. No member has asked to speak on the motion. Therefore, the question is that motion 6914 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed. There are six questions to be put as a result of today's business. The first is that amendment 6899.2, in the name of Hamza Youssef, which seeks to amend motion 6899, in the name of Jackie Bailey, on protecting primary care, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we will move to a vote. There will be a short suspension to allow members to access digital voting.